Nice to see you all. It is uh, Wednesday. Is this Wednesday? No, it's Saturday. I'm confused. Goodness gracious, this sheltering in place one day runs into the next, and they just, it's one big I know, right? Day. Today's Saturday. Yeah, so today's Saturday. It's 2 o'clock Pacific time, in, and we're in California. Um, Vera lives in Lancaster. You live in Lancaster, right? Uh, Mojave. Mojave. Okay. Oh, that's right. She moved to a better piece of property. Mm -hmm. She fosters Arabian horses. She rescues Arabian horses and, and re refurbishes them. And she's a knitter. She's a lovely designer. Um, Bear and I have known each other for several years. I first came on to her when I saw her patterns on Ravelry, her beautiful, beautiful sweaters that were made with fingering weight yarn. And where I live here in Bakersfield, you know, it never really gets cold. You might put a sweater on in the wintertime, but in order to, and I love to knit sweaters. So the only way I can knit sweaters for myself, and this is one of her designs, and be able to wear it is to use really lightweight yarn. And I love wool and other, other uh, fibers as well. Vera likes to knit with linen too. But... Um, Beer is originally from Germany, and she's going to tell her whole story in a minute once I let her talk. <laughs> and she has a bunch of her knitting to share and a lot of her patterns, and we'll create links down below the video later on that you can click to each one of her patterns if you're interested in any of them. One of the uh, I learned many things from Vera, lots of things I've learned from her, but the thing that I learned from her the most is that when you're knitting top-down garments, if you get the shoulders right, the rest of the garment flows. So if you get your shoulders, and see how nice these shoulders are? See how this just fits me perfect? This is one of her designs. I have another one here. This one's called Imagina, and it has, um, uh, it has lace going down the sides. Can you see that? It has a lace panel in, on both sides. This is another one that has a similar shoulder shaping. Um, you can't really see it because I don't have it on. It's a dark yarn, but it's called it's called pink pulley, but I made it in blue. But it has these uh, gathers right in the front of the neck, and it's so attractive on. It's just a really, and again, the shoulders fit absolutely perfectly, and it's a very, very attractive sweater. So, Vera, when I have people on here, um, I also have a lot of uh, my followers are on here also not that we can see them but they chat and so i'm going to say hi to a few of them before we start okay let's see who's here um diana danko and she's the one that takes the notes and does the timestamps. stamps uh, thank you diana and she's from southwest pennsylvania and then renee is from atascadero susan day from newcastle washington cindy mcbride from bakersfield kelly my cat from new hampshire Susan McBride from Scottsdale, Margit Hoosh Kumar from Germany, Loanna Hendricks from Missouri, Catherine Continental Combined from Berlin, Emily Boston from Central Pennsylvania, Fatima Han from Holland. She splits her time between uh, Portugal and Holland. She spends half oh, nice. the year in Holland and half the year in Portugal. She's a fabulous knitter. Champ Smith from New York City, Sue Matee from Fresno, Rona Shane from Southern California, Rebecca Cinco from Florida, Duke of Nico from Memphis, Debbie Wood from Detroit, Olga Alvarez. Olga, where are you from? She'll have to tell me in a minute. Sherry Cornick from Canton, Michigan. Uh, Knitting by Franco. This is Frank Jernigan. He's from San Francisco. Sean Lanterneau from uh, Maryland, Delise from Washington, Nuf Fai from Germany, Joan Wilk from Kansas, Elizabeth Nielsen from Sweden, uh, S.D. Ra from Amsterdam, and Nuf Fai says, we've missed you, Vera. So <laughs> I know I've been lazy lately. <laughs> you have not been I'm not lazy. Really lazy. I'm so this busy with lady, the horses. This lady is the last thing you would call last person you would call lazy. <laughs> oh my. Scott Tigner from San Francisco. Uh, Deb Borak from Ohio. Francoise from Lyon, France. Jackie Ingstrom from Bakersfield. Uh, Azel Gort from Cottage Grove, Minneapolis. 
Minnesota, Evelyn from Bakersfield, and Dorico from Canada. So um, I'm not going to ask Vera the question I ask everybody else, which is what brought you to knitting. First, I want her just to tell her story about how she got to where she is right now. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> It, the long, the long version, hour. okay? So um, I'm from Germany originally, and it was my great-grandmother that taught me how to knit when I was very young. I don't remember, you know, I don't remember ever. When is the first time I held knitting needles? I don't remember. And I did crochet too, and I still do crochet, but in terms of my passion is knitting. And my great-grandmother was a Handarbeitslehrerin. That's a teacher, uh, you know, the needlework teacher. And um, she always made the most amazing lace tablecloths out of this really fine, fine, thin yarn, almost like sewing thread. And it just amazed me. And I wanted to make, create beautiful things too. And so that's how I got to knitting. My mother at one point owned a yarn shop in Germany. And that was in the 80s or early 80s, and at the time, um, she had some snooty friends, hopefully none of them are watching, snooty in, in a nice way, because they would not follow a pattern. They thought, you know, a real knit knitter does not follow a pattern, they make up their own. Well, but my mom used to create the patterns for them and write them up, and so when I was a teenager, she enlisted me in writing up the patterns for her customers, and so that's how I kind of got to designing. Um, I lived in England for a while, loved the knitting there. Um, I loved Rowan Yarns and some of the um, local, you know, this is in the late 80s. And then when I came to the U.S., I um, was knitting a lot for myself. And I would just design things on my own. I hated seaming, so I kind of took it upon myself to create everything seamless and top down. And... I used to belong to a knitting group, and the ladies would say, well, what pattern is this that you're working on? And I said, oh, it's not a pattern. It's just something I made up. And so they encouraged me to write up the pattern. And there's a um, crazy Aunt Pearl. I don't know if she still has her blog. She used to blog about fashion and things. And one of the first designs that I published was actually a sweater that she found in Beverly Hills that was like $9,000, some insane price. And a friend of mine let Aunt Crazy Aunt Pearl know, oh, my friend Vera, she can make up a pattern. And so I think that was one of the first patterns that I officially wrote and published. And then later on, I worked for Cascade Yarns and made um, patterns for them, mostly top down. And then I um, started, you know, publishing into Weave Knits, Knit Scene. Um, you know, different different knitting magazines, but mostly independently on Ravelry. And um, I also did a lot of workshop for top down fitting, you know, how to fit a garment properly for top down and making it fit your figure. Um, and then I did publish some books in Germany, um, top down knitting books. Um, I have one book that is in France or in Canada now and published in French. Um, and so but mostly I really enjoy publishing independently. I do run a horse rescue um, with, we have currently, we have, we just had a baby born this morning. Um, he is fine. Thank, thankfully, it always makes me really nervous when the rescue horse comes in and she's pregnant. Um, so we have 61 horses now as of this morning. It was 60. <laughs> so, um, and so I'm busy with that, but the pattern sales do support the rescue. And so that's kind of, you know, it, I use the money toward the rescue horses. But as of late, I've been on a bit of a hiatus because I've been so busy. I bought our, my own property. So I'm on a 100 acre ranch. Um, so we have space for the horses and trying to turn it into a training center. And so I'm, you know, I've been just knitting for myself a lot, but I'm publishing, working on the pattern right here for summer, um, which is made in linen, love linen, love to knit in linen. Um, and so hopefully I'll test, have that being test knit and hopefully be publishing that pretty soon. So, um, I don't have a name for it yet. So, um, you also teach. 
not yes. knitting, but you te you have a job too, right? Yeah, so I'm a full-time teacher at German. I teach German <laughs> and in Los Angeles. And like right now, I'm teaching for three hours a day um, live on, you know, because the kids have to learn German. You can't do that with a worksheet. So I do three hours of live video every day. Mm -hmm. um, teaching online right now for my students because we can't go to the classroom, which is nice. Because now I don't have to drive because normally I drive almost four hours a day to, to go to Los Angeles. And so now I have more knitting time. So it comes in pretty handy. <laughs> right. So I'm thinking that, you know, maybe the fallout from this coronavirus is it might change how we do some things, you know. Yeah. Because it might yes. be found that some of these things are actually more efficient, not only mm -hmm. time-wise, but cost-wise, you know. Yes. Um, so... Mm -hmm. The red sweater there, the one that you're going to be publishing, that's your newest one, right? Yes. What are you calling yes, it? The sleeves are not done. It's on a <laughs> string. Can you see it? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm cheating. I'm like, I guess I tuck it away. So it's still on a string of yarn. So I have to finish it. It's just going to have some, you know, cap sleeves. Yes. It's not going to have anything in terms long. Um, mm -hmm. But I made it. I had some linen out of Lithuania. And so I made it, it's a fingering weight because it's very thin. And so I held the yarn double. And it's linen, but right? Linen? It's linen. I love linen. So, you know, as a knitter, you have to ask yourself, why am I knitting? Am I knitting because I love the process? I love the feel of wool in my hand. What's the reason I'm knitting? Or am I knitting because I want a functional garment that I can wear? You know, because I have a lot of people that say, oh, linen. No, I would never knit with linen. And I'm like, get over it. <laughs> because in the summertime, to wear a linen garment, it's just my favorite fi fiber, especially if you're somewhere warm. Yes, you know? like we are. Yes. M Mojave and is warm. So <laughs> I'm sorry? Mojave gets warm. Oh, yeah. We get in 100 degrees, so 40 degrees Celsius. Easy. Yeah. But um, I envisioned this to be worn over a T-shirt. Uh -huh. or over a little, you know, summer dress, and you put you put it on. I'm going to lift this up so you can see it because it has, it's pointy in the front, but I made it like this in the back too. So it's a little asymmetrical. Um, you know, when you have a little bit of extra, what did you call it, stuffing? What did yeah. you call it, extra? Uh, uh, padding, fluffing. Extra, extra padding, then you have to have something that's a little bit flattering to the figure. <laughs> and so if it's asymmetrical a little bit, then it'll come out nicely. And it's asymmetrical in the front and in the back where you really need it. Very so, cool. And um, I envision this to be worn over a tank top or like a little summer dress. And so you just have a little bit more coverage. So what is it going to be called? Do you have a name for it? Suzanne. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <With a Z. laughs> yeah, that's cool. Very cool. And you'll have that available on Ravelry, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's Most see certainly. some of the other garments you have there. Um, I think this is one of my all time favorites. This one is called Shibumi. It's a cardigan. Now, my patterns are all top down. So I focus on, you know, raglan sleeves, which is probably my favorite. Um, this one is a set in afterthought sleeve. So you do the garment, just, you know, you just do the front and the back first, and then you pick up stitches and, you know, knit the sleeve. And I have a different system to how to do this than what I've seen other designers do. Mm -hmm. um, and... So this is one of them. This one's called Shibumi. And one of the things that I like, I mean, I go back to the lace that my grandmother always, my great grandmother, you know, I love lace patterns. So, and I like to incorporate them into my patterns, just, just a touch, you know, I don't like an all lace garment or so, but just a touch because I still need stuck in it, sti stitch to just have some Zen knitting, you know, just to yeah, knit it while you're not thinking. And the stock, um, the stockinette also lends structure to the garment, 
Very and true. it makes it easier to size the garments. Yes, very true. Yes. Um, but I also find it slimming because if I, for example, here on this cardigan, if you're doing just a lace panel here and the rest is stuck in that, or here, see, it's not the whole body, then the eye is drawn to here and it actually has a slimming effect. Right. Um, so, for example, this one is called Galaxia. It's a summer top and it's made for my size. Um, and the same here, you know, it's there's a lace panel in the front. You know, obviously it's worked in one piece, uh, but it doesn't go all the way to the side. So it does have a slimming effect and then it's just stuck in that. The end. And what did you knit that one? And I love summer knits. What's no, that knit no from? What's your fiber? Um, this is actually um, um, Cascade Pima cotton. It's oh, their cotton yarn. Nice. It's a D yeah, this one is a DK weight. Um, I love knitting with lace weight. Um, oh, this one is called wow. Sarah Lace. This one is... This one is... Um, oh, this one is a set and sleeve that's knit simultaneously. So you start with just a shoulder piece and then you start the sleeves and then you continue the sleeves like you would with a um, raglan type. But here again, you know, there's, this is just 100 gram skein of lace weight. And this is Anzula yarns. I love Anzula because they're very nicely dyed. Now what's the, um, you need to give us the names of these garments because I'll attach Yeah, this one links. is called Sarah Lace. Sarah without the H. Okay. Sarah Lace. Okay. Um, I want to say this one is called Lollipop. So it again has the lace panel. This is a very light fingering. So, oh yes, this is called the Lollipop guard cardigan and this is a light fingering it has um the milk protein yarn in it have you ever heard of the milk protein yes the milk. yes uh -huh. mm -hmm. and milky way is this and zula milky way is the yarn and here what i did is i put pearls in it oh how pretty so beautiful it gives it a little bit of weight yes yeah, so i'm taking um i'm taking things from lace Mm -hmm. You know, because you can only wear so many shawls, right? I do knit shawls myself. I design shawls too, but my passion is garments. Yeah. So I try to take take some of these little lace um, features. This one is probably my all-time favorite. I named this one after my daughter, Amy, but it's A-M-I-E. And this one is also top down. Um, it's done with afterthought sleeves. What I did here is I took linen. I took a fingering linen. And I took a lace weight or fingering wool. And I held it double. Because I love the way wool and linen feels together. They were, at one point, there were some companies that were making... Um, their own mixed yarns with it, linen it was, and wool mixed. It was Loet, Loet, and it was called Mer to, it was Merlin. The yarn was called Merlin, and it was merino and linen. Yes. Yes, but this one I just held it together double, um, and it's just an open little cardigan. It has a lace feature on the sleeves, right? So just has a touch of lace. Um, let's see. This is one. This is one that was very, very popular, and it is a raglan. Um, it's stuck in it here and reverse stuck in it on the sleeve, but it's knit as a raglan, and it has the lace panel in the sleeve. Can you see it? Yes, that is gorgeous. So that one is a really nice one. And I, and I, and I, you know, one of the things I like about top down is I love three quarter length sleeves. So a lot of times that's what I do. I just make it three quarter length. Um, and I write the patterns for both lengths because right. it's so easy to adjust. It. And you can make them shorter um, if you want to, too. Like I do, I make them, you know, short sleeve. Yeah. I have fat arms. <laughs> <laughs> I like to cover them. 
<laughs> and that's why I like this panel on here. So I do a lot of paneling here because then it doesn't make your arm look so big, I guess. Um, this one is a very popular one. I made this one uh, pattern in fingering. And I also made it in, I made another one pattern for DK weight yarn. And this one, oops, is called dressage, like dressage, but with a T. And it has this little braid in the raglan, but it also has a braid in the center of the body and in the front and the back. And it's asymmetrical, so the back is longer than the, the front. And so it covers up your tush. So this one is a super popular pattern. This was a ver this has been a very popular pattern. And I wrote it in, like I said, I wrote this one for fingering and for DK weight. It's beautiful. People are saying they want to knit them all. Ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so um, I try to work with fit. You know, I try to have the garments really fit and I teach a lot of workshops for that. And I also, on Ravelry, you can actually buy collections. And I I think you can get some of the workshops. But the main thing, here's the secret to a really good fitting garment, is that as we go up in size, so somebody say who's an extra small and say an extra large or 2XL, um, a lot of designers make the mistakes and even, you know, the commercial and producers of, of, of clothing make the mistake that what they do is proportionately increase the shoulder size, you know, as the sizes go up. So if you're a plus size figure, the shoulder hangs off. Right. looks and like I mean, a tent. This t-shirt that I'm wearing, even though it's one of my favorite t-shirts, my shoulders are kind of hanging off. Right. right. And so your shoulder width is determined by your skeleton. So just because, you know, I have a little bit more fluffy stuff, right? Uh, my skeleton is probably the size of somebody who is an extra small. So our shoulders stay and they should not be increasing, maybe just a tad bit. But the width should not be increasing with our garments. Right. And so what makes it, what makes, you know, it's not very flattering to have these shoulders hanging off. In a t-shirt, it doesn't matter what kind of garment, that you know, commercially produced garment or our knitting. So if I have a nice fit here on the shoulders, you know, just in the shoulders right here and, you know, in, in the sleeve here. Um, then it makes for a much nicer looking garment. You can make it really boxy and baggy down below, or you can make it tight fitting. Um, as long as it fits up here, it makes, it makes it look flattering. And so that's kind of the things that I preach at my workshop and make sure that people kind of, you know, get the message and start knitting that way. And like you said, you really like the shoulder fit because I make it smaller than what the industry sizing says. Right. And it it just hangs so nicely. I mean, mm -hmm. the I've knit the two of these sweaters are my favorite sweaters to wear and I made them short sleeve. I wear these a lot in the spring and the fall. Mm -hmm. I still don't wear them in the summer so much. When it's mm -hmm. 110, you're just not going to wear anything like this, right. but I love them as far as how they fit they're awesome mm -hmm. so um how do people get in touch with you if they would like to have a line up a workshop with you um they can just on facebook i have a facebook page it's not super active i need to really get on the ball with that um they can just send a message there um that's probably the best way mm -hmm. yeah just write a facebook i have a facebook page called designed by vera sanon right and you also teach at retreats and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did the retreat for the Bakersfield Guild. That was yes. fun. Yes, it was so yeah. fun. We we had you. I think we had two different two different workshops, or two, yes. uh, two two different workshops. Then we had the retreat. Yes, yes. Because so we liked you so I, much, <laughs> we couldn't yeah, get the enough of you. Workshops. We had the first workshop, which is focuses mainly on you know the basics of top knot down knitting and it uh -huh. focuses a lot on raglans and how to fit a raglan very nicely so here's a tip so if you're knitting a raglan 
Okay, a lot of the raglans that you see in patterns, they make the raglan go all the way to underneath your, um, what do you call it? Your underarm, the arm side. The arm, yeah. In German, they say Axel. So I have Axel in my head. So, um, and, but that makes it for a very bulky sweater. That's very, very lots of extra fabric here. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to stop the raglan at about here where your bra strap kind of meets your underarm. Mm -hmm. And you want to do the rest by casting on stitches. You don't want to have that raglan going all the way to the center here. Um, and so a lot of people are like, oh, no, no, I, I, my raglan line is too short. No, it's not too short. It will make it a snug fit here so where you're not having all this puffiness. If you're a boxy man, if you're, you know, very or flat chested, it's not that big of a deal to go way down. But if you have any sort of what I call boobalage, it will it will crease a lot. It will create a lot of creases here. Right. Right. And then it doesn't make for a good fitting garment. So um, the raglan workshop kind of works with the individual sizes to see how long of a of a of a raglan line do you really need to mm -hmm. make it a nice fitting. And then how do you adjust it? You know, maybe put some throw some short rows in on the sides here, even though that's kind of workshop too. But um so my main thing is to get these raglans to fit nicely and to get this set in you know, set in top down sleeves fitting nicely. The other thing, um, I've done quite a few patterns that are contiguous. Right. The contiguous shape. Um, the issue with contiguous though is that it puts a, a lot of times it puts a lot of stress on the shoulder seam and then it pulls apart. So a lot of the contiguous patterns like this one I did you see, I don't know if you see, can see it. Um, this one is called Seeing Stripes. And for this cardigan, what I did is I took one um, hundred gram ball of pinkish yarn and another one that was darker. And then I held the yarn double, but th this is just two balls of lace weight yarn. And so I created these stripes, you know, I held two pink, together the pink and the dark together and then the dark and dark together to create the striping but it's 200 yards of um 200 grams of lace weight yarn but i did see how i did the contiguous here um so i did a bit of a saddle shoulder because the problem with contiguous is that it puts too much stress here on the shoulder seam, and then you have big holes where you work the increases. And then what happens is the top of the sleeve is too narrow. So this becomes very triangular, and it fits a very skinny person, but somebody who has a little bit, bit of padding, it doesn't fit very well. So a lot of my contiguous have a bit of a saddle shoulder here. And I find that solves the problem. And people don't walk around looking on your shoulder, right? Right. <laughs> so, you know, so it, it fits. It just fits much nicer that way. So so a lot. I have given it a lot of thought of how to fit garments up on the shoulder and up around here. Because I feel like if you get a good fit up there, then the rest is gravy. You know, you can just improvise or do whatever you want. Loose, flowy, you know, tight fitting, what have you. So um, when you do your workshops, one of the things we liked so much is about it is because you work really well with people of all different sizes and shapes, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. And your patterns yes, are think, easy it, to adjust for people of different sizes and shapes. Yes. And I think in part it comes because I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to teaching. And so I think about, okay, how can I teach this? And even though I teach German, I'm also licensed as a math teacher, so mm -hmm. I love the mathematics of things. You know, I like I like to have the problem. It's because it's just it's like architecture. You make it work out mathematically. I think it's like engineering. Yeah, there it's, you go. It's engineering with yarn. <laughs> I'm a yarn engineer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it sounds more um um 
high level, you know, because a lot of people PhD think. PhD in yarn engineering. Yeah, just say I'm an engineer. <laughs> well, what kind of engineer are you? Yarn? <laughs> yarn engineer? I'm a fiber engineer. <laughs> I'm not just a yarn hoarder, I'm a yarn engineer. There you go. <laughs> So let's see what else you have behind you there. Do you have a couple more garments? Um, this one we'd have to look up. I don't remember this one. Do I have a tag? Oh, it's, I got a tag on it. Okay, good. See, I'm more organized than I thought. This one is called Marion sweater. And it's a little top-down sweater that, you know, like I said, I like to incorporate a little lace pattern. So it has a lace and a sleeve, and it's a linen yarn. This is a linen yarn that, uh, linen and silk, I think this one is. And then it has the little buttons here, you know, just like, I like, you know, you have to break up the stockinettes just, you know, because if you just have stockinette, it's not flattering, I don't think. But if you just break it up a little bit, it makes it a little bit more flattering. That's beautiful. And this one is Snit in Anzula Vera. Right. I love um, the Vera yarn. Yeah, that's really nice. It's, uh, it's like I said, it's, I believe it's silk and linen mixed, or maybe it's all raw silk. I can't remember. But it's a fingering weight. It's a sport weight yarn. This is a sport weight yarn. But this sweater looks really great, too, in a fingering weight yarn. Right. It makes it really pretty. Um, And then this one... I haven't gotten around to publishing because I got busy. So I wanted to make this for myself. It's a tunic. So it's a sweater tunic. It was really cold this winter. And so I don't like turtlenecks too much. But this here is very short and it has a little eye cord in there. And I broke it up. It's a raglan. I broke it up with um, a seat stitch or the double seat stitch. Um, and it's a tunic, so it's very long. So if somebody is shorter, they could actually wear it as a dress. I haven't published this one yet though. And I might wait until it's getting cooler in the fall to publish this one, because now I want to focus on, um, you know, making some summer garments from patterns. That would be really cute over leggings or tight jeans. Yes, yes, exactly. That's what my thought was. It was, it was, I mean, you're in Bakersfield. It was cold this winter. Yes. Yeah, and then, too, we're getting snow again. I know. Um, it's crazy. So this one is actually, um, this is a Japanese stitch. I didn't, I didn't um, come up with this one, but this is a Japanese st stitch. It's butterflies. It's the butterfly cowl. And what I loved about this stitch is it looks the same on the inside as it does on the outside, which is very rare to have this exactness, right? Wow. And because this lace pattern is you're doing lace in every row, so it's really great to work this in the round. And I don't have the sweater because my daughter tends to steal the sweaters, especially if they fit her. Um, but they did make a sweater with a cowl neck with this pattern. So the sweater is a very, very simple um, raglan sweater, but the cowl has this lace pattern, so it just touches it off. But wow. my daughter swiped that sweater. Beautiful. I think I saw a picture of it somewhere. Um, yeah, one, one of uh, Sherry Cornick on here has a question for you, Vera. She wants to know, do you have different design considerations when designing with linen? Yes. So linen will grow when you are wearing it. Okay, so plant fibers will grow when you're wearing it. A lot of wool yarns, especially superwash, will, will grow if you're washing it, right? But with fiber, that's plant fiber, it will grow. So with this one, for example, I want something that's very loose, I want it flowing. You, it's very difficult to do anything tight fitting with linen because for one, you know, with body warmth, it will grow and it will get loose. Um, one of the things I do, I mean, this is going to be, you know, big and flowy um, to be worn over a dress or a tank top or something. But um, 
if you want something tighter fitting with linen, this is a knitter consideration, not so much a designer's consideration, but if you want something that's a little tighter fitting, knit the slice down, be brave, because when you're wearing it, it will loosen up and then you'll get the fit that you want. But if you, if you knit linen the way you want it to fit, You'll be disappointed because it will grow, unless it's something that's already made. And when you wash linen, you wash it in the washer and dryer, right? Do you throw yours in the washer and dryer? Oh, yeah. You can beat it up. Uh, beat yeah. It up. And it gets beat softer it I put and softer it in a regular and washing machine. Right. Yes. So and the more you wash linen, the better it, it becomes. Yes. Um, see, when you're knitting with linen, it doesn't bother me. But I know people say, oh, I don't like the way it feels. I want the warm, fluffy, more hairy stuff. And I'm like, no, get over it. Get over yourself, right? Because the, the end result, you want it for the end result. Um, I don't mind knitting with linen at all. I think I've gotten used to it. Um, so it, it just wears so nicely. And, and you will have it for years. I have some linen um, garments that there was a very cute super super cute linen pattern and it's not mine you know i knit other designers stuff too it's from interweave knits and it was called the counterpane tunic oh, mm -hmm. i just made myself another one i made it 10 years ago and it is the most that's it's just the cutest little tunic and counterpane tunic and linen doesn't pill no it doesn't and it's like <laughs> I, I made one 10 years ago. I still wear it today, 10 uh -huh. years later, uh -huh. you know? So Evelyn has a question for you. She says, do you use metal or wood needles? I use metal needles. I use metal. I, I knit very fast. So, okay, so there's a fun little anecdotal story. Um, I did a workshop in Germany, and the world champion in fast knitting and speed knitting um, took the class for me. And so I was like really flattered. She's a nice lady. Don't ask me her name, but she was a nice, nice lady. I remember she was really cool. And she watched me knit and she said, you could probably compete, Vera. So, and so, you know, she was faster than me, obviously, but we sat during the break and we were knitting and I knit continental and I have such speed when I'm knitting, especially if it's like stuck a net and around or so I get very fast. And I find that if I'm, um, knitting with wood needles, it it the need the the stitches don't move fast enough. It's not as smooth. So I use metal needles mostly. Now, if I have a very slippery yarn, then I will go with wood needles. Right, like if you're knitting with silk or, yes, or then rayon. I would definitely use wood right. Needles. Yes. Now, Olga has a question for you. Olga says, "Is linen very expensive?" It can be depending on where you buy it. Um, I like to buy my linen from Etsy or from eBay. Um, there are some linen producers in Lithuania or Estonia. So what used to be, you know, Eastern Europe, oh, it's still Eastern Europe, but what used to be part of the Soviet Union. So Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, they have linen producers. So you can actually buy it directly from the producer. And I, I went crazy. I went on a shopping spree and I bought thousands of yards of linen yarn and it's in the other room. I would have to run and get it, but it's, God, it was nothing. So this top, now I held the yarn double, but um, I would venture to guess that this held with just a single ply because a single is a lace weight would probably look awesome in linen um, for this pattern. Um, it got, I think it was a ball, like a hundred grams, which was about 450 yards it was like $5, $6. And if the secret to buying yarn overseas, like say Luth Lithuania is not to buy too large of a quantity, because if it's under a certain weight, it's quite cheap, cheap, I can't speak English today, cheap to ship. But if it goes above a certain weight, then it becomes very expensive to ship. So play with, you know, play with the shopping cart. Um, I could probably send you a link 
later on to where I bought some of the little okay. yarns from. And we, we and can it add comes it. already wound up. Yeah, we can add the link down below the video um, mm -hmm. on YouTube for people. Yeah. Yay. And yay. the quality is really, really good. Yes. And it's so, very, I mean, it's cheap because I've gotten, you know, I remember in 2010 when I knit the counterpane cart, uh, top the first time I used the cotton because I couldn't afford the linen that was in the yarn shop because it was like $25 for a hundred grams like for 400 yards or something and it was just too much you know because it would have been like 75 or a hundred dollars for a top and so I love my eastern Europe um, suppliers of linen now up until just the last couple of, well I think it's when you had your you had both your knees replaced like last yes. year and the year before but mm -hmm. prior to that you were spending your summer every year over in Germany teaching clat workshops yes yes I would travel the whole just Switzerland France and Germany I would travel for a whole month um and hold like five workshops a week or six sometimes in different places, yes. And I would travel 3,000 miles just driving between workshops. Yes, um, I miss that. You skipped a little bit part of your history that I think is interesting, and that's when your grandmother left you some money and you bought the orphanage in Haiti. Can you talk about yes. that? <clears throat> yeah, when my grandmother passed away, um, yeah, I lived in Haiti for a little bit. I lived there for several years and I used the money that my grandma left for me to, um, you know, I took over an orphanage. And even though I teach and do different things, I have a law degree and I process the adoptions for the orphans. And I have children. I adopted out 53 children. I'll process their adoption in Germany, Belgium, France. Argentina, Canada, the United States, and I think I have one, no, two children are in the UK. So, and, yes. And you have a couple yourself. I have more than a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have eight children altogether. Um, four of them are biological, and they're the youngest of my four. I was born in 95, so she, you know, they're well out of the house. Um and then I have two adopted children from Liberia because I did work in Liberia for a little while. And then I ended up adopting two children from Liberia. And then when I was working in Haiti, I also adopted two sisters. And those two are 14 and 13 now. So those are the only ones left at home. Yeah. And they're the ones that help you with the horses. Yes. Oh, they're fantastic. One is an amazing rider. And the other one, she doesn't like to ride so much, but she's amazing handling horses. You can give her the wildest stallion, and she just knock it off. And she, she's like, okay, okay, I'm coming. She has a real talent with horses on the ground. So do you have any plans to teach knitting anymore? Oh, I would love to. It's Yeah, I would love to. Now that, you know, things, well, I'm, you, you know, it may have to be online at this rate, right? But... You know, I mean, I'm, I had to rebuild my closet into my walk-in closet. I said, oh, I built a TV studio today yes. <laughs> in my walk-in yes. closet. So, you know, you have to have the right setup for it. And, you know, I'm learning just teaching the classes that I do for my students, mm -hmm. my regular students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm learning as I'm going along because I had never considered online teaching. as Right, you know, right. Yeah. And you'd be but very... I love I love the teaching because I love to meet people and you know loved I love yarns like I've done workshops at Walmiser in Germany for uh -huh. example and you know right um you know and just going shopping myself and looking at the yarns and getting ideas and just you know knitting brings you know you together from all over all cultures you don't even need to speak the language I mean I went to Ikea not too long ago and there was a lady from I forget where she was from from the Ukraine or somewhere I don't know if she spoke Russian or Russian or what language she spoke I can't remember but we couldn't communicate but she was a knitter and so she pulled out her knitting and I pulled out my knitting and we compared and we knew what we were each doing and we could communicate through the knitting, which is fun. Yes, that's what that's what I love about knitting, especially in this current the current times that we're in, is that mm -hmm. um, 
it brings us together because there's so much going on in the world right now that is divisive and everyone's trying yes. to divide us into this group or that group or the other group and fight in, you know, it's, that's mm -hmm. horrible. It's so stressful. And that's why I love yes. knitting because knitting is above all of that. It transcends all of yes. that and brings us together with common ground. Like you said, you don't even have yeah, to I speak agree the same you. language. doesn't matter whether you're Democrat or Republican or Catholic or Muslim or, you know, you could, it's, yes. we're all knitters and your brain has some little mm -hmm. key in it that we all have that same little key and that's what connects us together. Yeah. Well, very do you have so. anything else you would like to show? Or have we seen? I think you've, I've kind of shown it all. I the, the okay. things that I had here. Yes. So um, I'll give everybody a minute to post any more questions that they might have. Okay. Um, SD Ross says I have a nice package of Bommelin yarn from the Norwegian Drops to knit my next summer top. Ooh. It's really cheap in Europe. That sounds yes, nice. That, you could. Um, I believe there's a, isn't there a drop store here on the West Coast? Isn't there is. And in, in fact, it's over in San Luis Obispo. And they used to have a, a storefront there, but they closed the storefront. But you can still order online. It's the Fable yarn, all that Fable mm -hmm. yarn. It's drops. Yes. Um, it's very yes, inexpensive. Drops has good quality. It's high it's quality, quality yarn and very, and very inexpensive. And all of their patterns are free. And I was lucky enough one time to be over when they had their storefront open, and I actually met their tech editor. And she's okay. awesome. Awesome. And she tech edits all their patterns. Can you imagine that? Uh -uh. Um, but their That's yarn's lovely. awesome. And they have nice cotton yarn, too. Mm -hmm. um, and they have, uh, they have the mercerized and the non-mercerized cotton. So... Mm -hmm. Um, that's nice. I think I like the mercerized cotton better because it seems to hold up over time. Right. The unmercerized mm -hmm. is what you would get like in a t-shirt, you know. Yes. And then the mercerized gives it that little bit of a shine mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, it looks a little more dressy. Cindy McBride says, it's so good to see you. And there have been quite a few people on here that were in the retreat that you did with us and they've all been saying hi too. So, um, I think I'm. I, we're going to draw this to a close. Okay, it was, it was fun, wonderful Suzanne. having you on here, Vera, and really nice yeah, seeing you again. We and have, it's inspirational. Now I have to get my button gear and finish writing up that pattern. Exactly. I will make this a free pattern, though. Okay. Because I just feel that um, you know, with with the times and people knitting and people being home, try something different. You know. Um, and I'm planning, this is a very simple pattern. I mean, the funny thing is, though, it took me four times to start it. <laughs> I've never frogged so much in my life. Um, and, you know, it's just a fun pattern. It's actually just kind of an, an altered feather and fan pattern. But my thing is, I'd seen a few patterns online that had the feather and fan in the front, but nothing in the back. And also, I wanted it wider. So I experimented it with it a little bit to make it wider. Um, it works only if you were you knitting a little bit looser gauge. So um, because the feather and fan needs to stretch out here and it won't if it's too tight of a gauge. Right. So this is why I held the um, the linen yarn that I have double. It's a it's a lace weight, um, and I held it double. And I would say it's probably a sport weight at this point. Um, but I I would venture that it would be really pretty and just a lace weight linen yarn. Um, the gauge is 20 stitches. So it's 20 stitches to four inches. Okay. Um, and, you know, you can just beat it up. I mean, when I took it out of the washing machine, I was slapping it around. Like, you it's can take gorgeous. out your anger issues on your linen garment. You got a lovely <laughs> comment from Luana Hendrick. She says, thank you, Suzanne. We needed this. Vera is a lovely person. Oh, thank you. I needed this, too. And so here, yes, I thought it might help you with your knitting mojo, you know. It's sometimes yeah. you lose it and, and you need a help. Here's a question from Francoise. She says, have you a special method to block a garment knitted with linen yarn? 
you beat it up. You throw it in the washer Honestly, and dryer. Yeah. Yeah. I Well, I didn't put this in the dryer. What I did is I just stretched it. I didn't pin it. I just stretched it the way I wanted and let it lay flat. But I washed it in the washing machine and on high spin cycle. So, you know, everything you've learned about, oh, no, be very careful with your knitted garments in the washing machine. No, just be rough with it. The rougher you are with linen, the more smooth it's going to get. In fact, when you first knit it, you go, oh, my God, am I going to like this? Because it's so crisp. Yes. It's, it's too crisp. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like knitting with paper. You know, it, it doesn't have any flow to it. I, the, yeah. You throw it into that, the washer. And it comes out, and it's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Yes, it is. And it it's transformative. Time too. Yeah, so you just have to have faith the whole time you're knitting it. You have to have faith that it's going to come out. <laughs> yes, yes. And I swear, it'll probably be your favorite garment. I know, like, you know, we love the feel of wool and soft and things like this. Um, when I'm knitting with linen, this is my second top that I just lit, knit in the last two or three weeks. And it was linen, and I'm just, I, I'm okay with it. I, I Like, I've gotten used to it, you know. And plus, I think of, oh, it's going to be so pretty when it, it's finished. It's going to be so pretty when it's finished. So, you know, just you have to think of the end product. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for, for joining us here. Well, and I'm going to go see the baby horse that Ooh. was born today. We had a baby today. So yeah, I'm well, go post, play post, with him. post a picture on uh, Facebook. Now, I have a yes, group. Yes, and, and our horse rescue name is Love This Horse. So yes. if you're on Facebook, look up Love This Horse. It's an Arabian horse rescue because I'm going to be posting baby pictures this afternoon because I'm going to go out and see him and post it's, pictures. Yes, yeah, Love This Horse. Um, I'll uh, share it in my knitting group and I'll also invite you to my knitting group. We have uh, almost 5,000 people in it. Yeah, I'm in the Facebook group. I'm oh yeah, group. yeah, yeah. So um, we'll link to your horse pictures there. So it was so okay, fun super. seeing you, Vera. It was so fun seeing okay. you. Okay. It was fun. So we'll go. Okay. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.